Hi everyone, my name is Erin with Pueblo Science and I'm a fourth year undergraduate student studying immunology and psychology at the University of Toronto. Today, I'm going to give you a crash course of the science behind competitive swimming. With this experiment, we'll be taking a trip to the poolside to determine what makes swimmers like the world's most decorated Olympic medalist, Michael Phelps, so fast. By the end of this video, you'll learn a little bit more about Newton's three laws of motion, as well as the forces thrust, drag, and buoyancy in order to figure out what really goes on underneath the surface. To try this experiment, you will need a pool or any open body of water and you in your swim gear or, in my case, an incredibly talented sister to demonstrate. Water safety is of the utmost importance. Be sure to stay within your own abilities and if you are not a strong swimmer, professional supervision and or the aid of a flotation device is advised. For this experiment, you really get a lot of liberty as to how you want to go about it. So, go into your own pool, try the strokes that you're comfortable with, but in the meantime, I'm going to take a couple clips of my sister swimming and break down the science behind what makes her not look like this and instead makes her look like this. To understand the science behind competitive swimming, it's important to understand Newton's three laws of motion. These three laws are the law of inertia, the law of mass and acceleration, and the law of action and reaction. Newton's first law of inertia states that a stationary object will remain stationary until it is acted on by an unbalanced force. A real world example of this is the strong push off a swimmer needs to get started on their race. Newton's second law is the law of mass and acceleration, which states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, cool, but how does this affect swimmers? This law means swimmers that exert different forces can move at different speeds and swimmers with different masses can generate different amounts of force. Using an example of some Olympic medalists, you can see here that Cody Miller on the left has a lower mass than Michael Phelps on the right. Therefore, using the equation I just taught you, Michael Phelps would need a greater amount of force in order to go the same acceleration as Cody Miller. Newton's third and final law of motion is the law of action and reaction, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is probably the most easily understandable law of motion in relation to swimming. What this law means is if you want to move forward through the water, you will need to push backwards on the water so the water can exert an equal and opposite force on you. Finally, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the forces acting on a swimmer moving through the water. The four main forces acting on a swimmer are the force of gravity or the weight of the swimmer pulling them downwards, the buoyant force or the force lifting them up towards the surface of the water, thrust, the force propelling them forwards, and last but not least, drag, the force opposing thrust and pulling them backwards. Linking back to what we talked about with Newton's third law, it's quite obvious that each one of these forces has an opposite. For example, while swimming, a swimmer must overcome the force of drag through the force of thrust. The three forces I want to discuss in a little bit more detail for the remainder of this video are thrust, buoyancy, and drag. Let's first talk about thrust, which is responsible for the forward motion. A swimmer can manipulate their arms and legs to increase thrust. This is often called a swimmer's natural feel for the water. In order to maximize thrust, swimmers can pull deeper, bend their elbows into the catch position, and be sure to bend their arms and legs in optimal positions. For example, it's important to not over bend your arms and legs as this can decrease the amount of force produced and increase drag. Next we have buoyancy. An important component of buoyancy is the fact that objects will only float in water if they are less dense than the water themselves. The physical law of buoyancy, known as Archimedes' principle, tells us that an object submerged in water will be pushed upwards with a force that is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced by that object. For example, if a swimmer is displacing 20 kilograms worth of water, it will be pushed upwards by the equivalent of 20 kilograms worth of force. Finally, we have drag. 
ever wondered why Olympic athletes on TV are always wearing those funky swimsuits that go down to their knees? Well, this is because they want to minimize drag. Drag is the force that opposes thrust, and drag can be increased as the swimmer's speed increases. In order to minimize drag, swimmers can be as streamlined as possible, as shown here by my sister Emily. They will also want to maximize their time spent underwater, as this is the point of least resistance during swimming. And finally, as shown here in these photos, they can also wear tight-fitting swim caps and racing suits designed to minimize drag. So what did we learn today? We started out by learning that Newton has three laws of motion. The law of inertia, the law of mass and acceleration, and the law of action and reaction. These laws help us explain how the swimmer moves through the water in a certain way. We then learned about the four forces acting on a swimmer, which include thrust, drag, gravity, and buoyancy. Thrust allows us to move forward in the water, and a swimmer is buoyant because they are less dense than the water they're swimming in. Finally, drag acts to prevent a swimmer from moving forward, and drag can be minimized by using streamlined body positions and wearing high-tech gear such as racing suits and swim caps. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, be sure to try this experiment at home and tag us at Pueblo Science with your finished results. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks for watching and comment down below what you'd like us to try next.